Football is a brutal game. Compared to the other major American sports, football has significantly more injuries. According to NFLinjuryanalytics.com, football has an injury rate of 75.4 injuries per 1,000 athletic exposures. The NBA has a rate of 19.1, the NHL has a rate of 15.6, and the MLB has a rate of 15.5. But for however violent football may be, its counterpart flag football is quite the opposite, with injuries being non-existent. But 20 years ago in a meaningless flag football game, one of football's brightest young stars had his career derailed in a way you'd never expect. The University of Georgia is known for churning up phenomenal running backs, with guys such as Herschel Walker, Todd Gurley, Terrell Davis, Nick Chubb, and Sony Michelle all donning the Georgia jersey at some point or another. But one of these great Georgia running backs who's been forgotten is Robert Edwards. Robert arrived at the University of Georgia in 1993 where he played cornerback for two seasons until going into his junior year when his coaches decided to turn him into a running back and he took to the position like a fish to water. In Robert's first game at running back, he scored five touchdowns over South Carolina, which set the tone for the next three years as he progressively built off each year, finishing 1995 with 325 rushing yards and six touchdowns, 1996 with 800 yards and nine touchdowns, in 1997 with 908 yards and 12 touchdowns. Following his time at Georgia, Edwards declared for the NFL Draft. Around this time, the New England Patriots were desperately searching for a running back. Their previous back, Curtis Martin, who just had his third consecutive season with over 1,100 rushing yards, had left town to join the New York Jets, and the Pats needed someone to fill the big shoes Martin had left behind. The Patriots would ultimately select Robert to do this when they took him with the 18th overall pick in the first round of the 1998 NFL Draft. Now, even though Edwards was a young, talented athlete with breakaway speed, it didn't look as though he would immediately become a key contributor on the Patriots, due to the fact that going into the 98 season, the Patriots had a gunslinging quarterback in Drew Bledsoe and receiving weapons in Terry Glenn, Troy Brown, and Ben Coates. But that is until the season started. Robert scored, and scored, and scored, and scored, and scored, and scored again, kicking off his career by scoring touchdowns in his first six consecutive games, an NFL record. But he wasn't done yet, as he followed up his scoring streak with other impressive games, including 70 rushing yards versus the Indianapolis Colts in Week 9, 196 rushing yards versus the St. Louis Rams in Week 15, and 101 rushing yards versus the San Francisco 49ers in Week 16. He would ultimately finish his rookie year with 291 rushes for 1,115 yards and 9 touchdowns, while also catching 35 balls for 331 yards and 3 touchdowns. Quite the rookie year. Now, back in 1998, the NFL had an event known as the Rookie Beach Bowl, which was a 4-on-4 flag football game thrown by the League of the Pro Bowl for that year's outstanding rookies. Now, during the Beach Bowl game, Robert Edwards lined up in coverage on receiver R.W. McCorders. R.W. ran a vertical route, and quarterback Charlie Batch dropped back and threw a deep ball to him. As the ball was coming in, Charles Woodson ran over in coverage, and the three men jumped up at the ball, which would ultimately fall away and be incomplete. But as Robert Edwards landed, he came down awkwardly on his knee. Now, I'm not going to show you the rest of this video due to how gruesome it is, but you can easily find it on YouTube if you want to see it. Now, as Edwards landed in the sand, he initially felt no pain, but knew something was very wrong based on how the injured leg looked. Once Robert was finally carted off and put into an ambulance, the pain in his leg became excruciating, and he compared it to dislocating your finger times 50. When he got to the hospital, he learned that he tore his ACL, MCL, PCL, and partially his LCL. He'd suffered major nerve damage, and had sliced the artery in his leg. The doctors then told him that if his leg didn't heal properly, he would have to be amputated, and that if he ever did walk again, it would be with a cane. Eventually, after missing two seasons, Robert would recover and make it back to the Patriots training camp in 2001, but after suffering a groin injury, Bill Belichick released him with an injury settlement. From there, he would go on to make the Dolphins in 2002, even scoring twice in his debut for them, but he rarely played the rest of the season. He would go on to win Comeback Player of the Year, 
but the award was more for what he came back from than how he had played. Robert had just lost that explosiveness that had made him special, and he was never able to regain his prayer form. A few years later, he signed on with the CFL, and had a few successful seasons playing in Montreal and Toronto. Currently, Robert is a very successful high school football coach, and he has certainly made the most of this terrible situation. Thank you.